He's the second youngest baby ever born in our country at exactly 22 weeks and zero days. And he's amazing. Thomas is a testament to life. And there's a reason that Thomas was born the way he is. And um, I mean, I firmly believe it's God's will to affect others. I was 21 weeks and five days, just barely halfway through my pregnancy and um, my membranes ruptured. My water bag broke and it had never broken with any of the other kids. I was shocked. I uh, called 911 and went to the hospital. So no, I wasn't emotionally prepared. Um, at that time, you know, I had an examination. I was told that uh, the baby, you know, would, wouldn't be viable. We asked the NICU to come and speak to us. Heard a lot of dire statistics about uh, a baby, you know, if, if the baby would even be viable at, you know, 22 weeks. So, you know, when Deborah went in and, you know, she went into labor, uh, wasn't looking good. Um, they gave us all the statistics. You know, the chance of survival was slim to none. If he did survive, you know, we'd be looking at a long, arduous road of probably blindness, he may not walk, brain damage. Um, they really painted a dire picture for our little guy. So um, they did an examination. She said, yeah, based on my examination, I think she's got an infection. We need to get the baby out immediately. Um, I didn't agree. I asked for a second opinion. Another OB came in before she even crossed the doorway. She said, I agree. She has an infection. We need to get the baby out right away. So, you know, at that point, um, I wasn't very happy. The OB, the original one, was doing an examination and she looked up at me and she said, you know, the placenta is not going to pass. I'm going to have to do a DNC. If you'd like, I could do it on the fetus as well. And, and I told the doctor when she said, why don't you abort? I said, I don't care what right. my child comes out. He's going to be my child. We're going to care for him. And at that point, um, I told... I had a few choice words for her, but I asked her to leave the room and bring someone else in. So, um, yeah, that was, my head was spinning. You know, it's just, you never think you're gonna be faced with a moment like that. I was, <laughs> I was alone with a nurse who was setting me up for an IV. Um, and I, I just gave a, a, a small, small push and I felt the top of the baby's head crown. It didn't take very much, one small push and the baby was out and I could feel him. I could feel little arms and little legs and he was amazing. He was breathing on his own. Um, they had a little difficulty time intubating him, but uh, I looked up and then I saw Dan and tears were just streaming down his face. It was, I, I didn't know if the baby, is because the baby because Thomas wasn't living, or uh, because yeah. they were successful in the intubation. And he was one pound, two ounces. I've never even seen a baby that was one pound, two ounces. He was the tiniest thing. So emotionally, I went from not knowing if my son was alive to knowing that he came out fighting. And uh, it was awesome. Um, so it wasn't until you know, maybe an hour later I went up and I saw him. His eyes hadn't opened yet. And even at that point, um, you know, it was day by day. We were, you know, we, we because his eyes were fused, closed, we didn't know when they did open, would he be able to see? Um, we were told it's the honeymoon period, he's stable, but there's, you know, a period where he could, um, you know, get, get very sick. So to brace ourselves for what's to come. He was released uh, on his due date, December 22nd. Um, so four and, and a half months. 18 weeks, before. exactly. 18 weeks he was spent in the NICU and he weighed almost eight pounds. He looked like I thought he would look coming home on his actual due date. Um, the fact that it was near Christmas was just the best, best Christmas ever. But you know, little Thomas came home to the madness of, you know, a big family, and it, and it was just such joy. I mean, just a true celebration of life. And he's perfect. 
he came home without any oxygen support, without any um, any feeding additional tube. Yep. feeding tube. He's you know it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it was um, great. A and miracle. The, and the doctor who was on him was one of the best NICU doctors out there. And you know, a couple of days before he was being discharged, he came by because you know because Dan, no one gave him a chance to live. I didn't think I gave him one in a million. And he goes, the fact that he's here now and as healthy as he is, he goes, he's a miracle. He's perfect. He uh, plays, talks. Uh, he's just yeah. amazing. He's walking Swims. Around. He's <laughs> just around. very curious, um, just like any of our other children were. Well, you know? except he's the miracle man. Right. And the other kids know that. Um, <laughs> I mean, Thomas is at the center of so much in the family. and. You know his older brothers and sisters cherish him, and it's 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 incredible just to see the love that they have for him, and uh, you know they never forget you know the small beginnings of uh, Thomas, and uh, you know, big things are meant for that little guy. Don't let anyone tell you what is viable and not viable. Thomas came into the world. I had never even heard of a baby being born in 22 weeks. And not only did he come into the world, but he's he's perfect. He's wonderful. And, um, you know, don't, don't let any doctors convince you otherwise. If your baby is meant to be here, he or she is meant to be here. Yeah. You know, give give the baby uh, the chance. And, and every baby is. And, you know... I have a lot of friends who have had children, you know, if you're past a certain age, you know, now it's ultrasound after ultrasound and they scare the heck out of the moms and dads. And if there's any hint of any issues, it's, it's sad how many doctors would say, you know, perhaps you should terminate because there may be issues. And I, I could count dozens of stories of people I know who were told they should consider terminating the pregnancy and their kids are perfectly healthy. And if they weren't perfectly healthy, they still would be a perfect right. little baby. You know, choose life. Don't, don't fall in with the culture of death that's out there and, uh, and fight for what you know is right. Fight for your child.